I will end that war in one day. It'll take 24 hours. During the debate with Kamala Harris, Trump once again said that he would end the Ukraine-Russia war within 24 hours if elected president. Which begs the question, how could a president end the war in 24 hours? I've heard people on both sides of the aisle say, well, he could get Russia to pull out of Ukraine, giving up any territory it had taken, including Crimea. And I've heard people on both sides of this debate say, well, he will just tell Ukraine he's cutting off the aid to them. And Kamala Harris said at the debate, the reason Donald Trump says the war will be over in 24 hours is because he will just give it up. But these answers don't quite cut it for me. Uh, one thing is, if we cut off Ukraine, Europe would continue to fund them, and they could continue the war for quite a while. And that is not ending the war in 24 hours. Same with the idea of getting Russia to leave Ukraine. I don't think they're just going to march out and just give up everything they have been working on. That's going to be very low for the morale of the citizens and the soldiers. I think what Trump has in mind is to let Putin and Zelensky negotiate a settlement as far as they can. And then I have some insight that might offer suggestions that he might give to the two sides. And we would all benefit from hearing your comments and suggestions in the forum. Remember, Trump prides himself on being the great negotiator. After all, he wrote the book, The Art of the Deal. So to have a great negotiation that is successful, you get all parties involved to have an agreement that is amicable to all of them. What's interesting is that when the Russian troops were at the border of Ukraine ready to invade, both Bernie Sanders and Trump felt that we should negotiate everything in any way we can to prevent the war from starting. So I think what most people would like to see, regardless of who wins this presidential election in the United States, that the war should be negotiated as quickly as possible after the election. Most experts agree that the war has reached a stalemate. Also, we're in a dangerous situation. We have an army that we are funding that is inside the borders of Russia, a country that has tactical nukes and many other types of nuclear weapons. So you might not want to back that bear into a corner. To negotiate, you ask to ask yourself, what do these parties want? Well, for Russia, there's a military alliance on their border. And for Ukraine, they would like to get Crimea back. There's Russian-speaking areas of Ukraine, then I'm hopeful they'll just let them become independent little countries. What's the big thing, though, that people want? All parties involved. U.S., Europe, Russia, Ukraine. Well, to answer that question, we have to ask, what are most wars really about? And for that, we have to follow the money. 
And the money usually points to resources in wars. So just a little bit of insight. If you remember when we left Syria, President Trump said, and I quote, We're keeping the oil. We have the oil. The oil is secure. We left troops behind only for the oil. So that leads us to an answer to the trillion dollar question. What do all sides want? And how can they find an agreement that is satisfactory for all of them? So in the end, I see Trump saying, look, here, Vladimir, your people get a third. Vladimir, your people get a third. And Donald will agree that the large Western oil companies get to develop the oil fields and the other third will go to paying back the war loans, the rebuilding loans, the building up the infrastructure for the oil, and hopefully some Western agency will do the accounting and disperse the money because that area of the world isn't too well known for its proper accounting. So we have come up with a template that will allow the falcon, the bear, the bald eagle, and the white bull to be happy with this share plan. So Zelensky will go to his people and say, we did a win-win-win situation. We will now get reparations for our injured and the families of dead soldiers. We will be provided money to rebuild. Then Putin will go to his people and say, Patriots, all three of us have won the war, and we can proudly hang our flag knowing that we don't have an adversary on the border. And so we have reached an agreement that will leave everlasting peace. Then Trump will come out and he will say, yes, it was a win-win-win situation. I negotiated the deal. The U.S. is getting paid back. So that's if it turns out a nice, happy ending. This is Brian Diederich. It's Idle Etzel. 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 Et